find the real equator. We have the compass on our phones to prove that. I'm gonna turn my my compass on just to show you how it works and I'm gonna mark you know the line for you all right if you want to make a video video is five dollars <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that, you know, if you have an iPhone, yes, right. I'm going to show you how it works. Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, how I can tell now it's much easier because we have compass in our phones. Yeah, zero, zero. We're going to cross degrees. actually land equator a couple of times. So listen. In your compass, you're going to see there is a sign down there. Right under the degrees, yeah, the... you have three zeros. Three zero. Oh, yeah. Zero degrees. Yes. If you move close enough to uh, 188 meters to the south, which is that way, the very first zero will change to one degree. Because you're one degree southern equator, right? So this next zero is minutes, and the third one is seconds. The globe has been, first of all, show me with your fingers how the earth does rotate. This way? Rotates like this? Yeah. Yeah. Anti-clockwise. Another glass of wine for Eileen. <laughs> the earth, yes, the earth rotates this way, from west to east. That's why we see always the sunlight coming from the east to the west. Right? So the light is right above our head right now. Which means at around six, you will see the light behind those mountains. But the light is not moving. We are the ones which are rotating on, on our own axis. Right? Anytime you will see that the earth rotates this way, March 21st and September 23rd, the light will come behind a mountain, which is called Kayame. So the third highest mountain in Ecuador will be naturally lighted every March 21st and every September 23rd. If you're right here on the equator and you come to here, let's say in December, December 22nd, the light will be, yes, will come 23 degrees south on the equator over the Tropic of Capricorn. That's why you know people who live in the north is gonna have the short days because the light is gonna be in the south. Six months after, if you come here on June 21st, yes, the sunlight is going to be above the Tropic of Cancer, 23 degrees northern equator. Long days for you, shorter days for the Argentinians and the Australians, right? But the native people realized that the sun was moving there to the Tropic of Capricorn, they moved to the Tropic of Cancer, but always came back here on March 21st and September 23rd and enlightened this mountain at the horizon. This is, you know, how they realized they were in the middle, in the middle of somewhere. Not, you know, this perfectly round, let's say, planet. In the middle of somewhere. And they thought that the light was moving somewhere and coming back here. What the French people came to do is find the equator with a uh, very interesting artifact that was a double wheel telescope. Let's see a couple of wheels. And you know, they were, make, they were making triangulations. And after, you know, measuring certain distance from the equator to the north, they start later, you know, checking what is the curvature of the planet. And, you know, using trigonometry, right? So let's say, going from here to the top of that mountain. After checking what is the curvature of the end, the, sorry, of the land, they remove all these mountains from here and they said, all right, the distance from here to the base of that mountain is going to be, let's say, five seconds. If I make some triangulations, I'm going to find what is the distance in the next five seconds. All like this until I reach the pole. And then, you know, they realize that this distance from here to the pole is going to be 10 million parts. So they have to chunk this in 10 million parts, which is going to be one meter, something that doesn't move. The problem is that they made, never, never made, you know, a, a 
accurate measurements. They should have come here. But they, what they did, they went almost thousand feet away from here and placed there. So that's why you know nowadays the meter is just a symbol. The meter now is measured in vacuums. It's not the distance from the equator to the pole. It's just you know a piece of metal that is laying in the Louvre Museum in Paris that is being used as a reference to set yes to set the uh, fundamental unit of the metric system. Right? So what I mean. If I'm right here in the middle, all the ones which are at the left are going to be like, for example, Diane and Debbie. You're very close to Canada right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell Tina and Sicily are very close to Argentina and Australia. The more I move to the right, the more I go to the south. The more I move to the left, the more I go to the north, right? The Tropic of Cancer is passing through Mexico. The Tropic of Capricorn is passing through Antofagasta, Chile. That is, you know, that's the spectrum of light that we have. Because we are right in the middle, the light is never going to change. It's going to be the same all year round. Yeah. If I follow the equator this way, I'm going to find Colombia and Brazil. But the equator along these countries go through flatland. Then I will cross the Atlantic Ocean and I will find Borneo, Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo. We'll find uh, um, Suriname. Then we go through uh, Kenya, Nairobi. Nairobi has also the same, you know, kind of lines. But unfortunately, a lot of people all over the world has been taking advantage of visitors saying that I'm in the equator, I'm in the equator. You can tell right now, the equator is passing through public and also private land. So if I own this house, I could set here a huge museum <laughs> and start charging me money. Yes. If I go to, you know, this way, Sally. <laughs> if I go this way, first, don't, try not to pet the dogs. If you walk this way, you will cross the Andes, and then we will find the Galapagos Islands, uh, crossed by the equator as well, and they will fr cross through Indonesia, Sao Tome, Principe. Yes? So the equator is that imaginary line that is split the whole land in two perfect hemispheres. Because the Earth rotates this way, there's two hemispherical forces that create the hurricanes and tornadoes in the north, they create, you know, the typhoons and cyclones in the south. Because we are right in the equator, we don't have that, yes? So we don't have tornadoes, we don't have hurricanes. We have volcanic eruptions and terrible politicians. <laughs> but not hurricanes, <laughs> see? That's something called Coriolis effect. So if you were, remember later, at the monument, if you were in a monument later, you're gonna be 1,000 feet away from the equator. This is like the real spot. Okay, can you take a picture? If you want to take a picture, I man, okay. I can easily take you to a complex and you can take the picture there later, yes? But just historical place. This is like the real one. Yes. You want to so take a picture? You are really on the equator. Yeah. Plus he's traveling both uh, hemispheres right now. Of the real equator. Of the real equator, I guess. Yeah. That's the north and this is south. Very good, thanks. And this is the line here. This is the equator here, right? Yeah, the actual equator. This is what? the north. The north. The north. north. That's the north. And south. To the south. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> right next to the equator, we stop at this uh, restaurant where we're going to taste a little piece, a little uh, piece of uh, a guinea pig, just to get the taste. Guinea pig, potato with uh, a hot soup. 
tomatoes made of different kinds of tomatoes, avocado, and uh, chimichurri sauce. After seeing it, you feel odd eating it. So this is empanada with meat. Empanada with plantains, green plantains. Yeah, but cheese. And cheese. So this is a Ecuadorian ceviche, and you have the corn there, and basically you put the corn. Yeah, it's like croutons. It's like yeah, it's like croutons. Bread you put it bread. into the uh, ceviche, mix it, and this is shrimp ceviche. Shrimp, yes, and shrimp they, is very cheap. Shrimp is the second largest source of income here in Ecuador. Export. Export item, yes. Look at the shrimp there. It's huge. <laughs> huge. Humongous. Sangria with fruits in there. Next part, we're going to have some uh, sorbets. So even though they use the US dollar, they mint these coins. So this is a half a dollar, the big one, and the smaller ones are one dollar coins. So we're going to visit the, the monument, which the French marked off as the equator, but apparently the calculations were a little off. What flavor is that? Fig. Fig. It's really fig. nice, right? I still have fig chunks too. Yeah. Yeah. So, supposedly right in the middle, to my right here is the northern hemisphere, and to my left here is the southern hemisphere. on top of the monument and this is the Let's take a walk around, look at the scenery. Is that? Is it 2,899? So we're going to get our passport stamped here. Ooh, show me. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yes. 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 The northern part of Colombia. Do you know how long this valley is? It's been 
of whole Ecuador from the north to the south. Right? We're gonna stay tonight in a place which name is Puerto Lago. Shamanic rituals, medicine men, medicine men in our go to perform their rituals all along. This is you know the program for tomorrow. We're almost there and I will let you know why the program of tomorrow is gonna be. So after visiting the zero degree latitude equator we checked into a place Otavalo and we are in the Andes and there's a lake uh, San Pablo Lake uh, and this is a beautiful scene here we have like a, these cabins here that's our little uh, cabin up there it's very beautiful and right by the lake This is a nice picture. This is the main dining area. We'll, we'll be having uh, dinner and breakfast. into our room. All right, this will keep us warm and toasty for the night. We also left a little hot water bottle here to warm the bed.